Hello once again, everybody, and thank you for joining me in the Better's Box. It's bangthebook.com's KBO betting podcast for Thursday, May 28th. I am your host, Adam Burke. This and every edition of the Better's Box presented by our friends over at DSI Sportsbook. BTB and the number 200 is that promo code. 100% deposit match bonus for the Sportsbook. 100% deposit match bonus for the live casino at BetDSI. It's only a game until you bet it. Still doing the daily KBO article over at bangthebook.com. That's been a little bit of a struggle here, but I think the content is pretty good. Gives you a full breakdown of the starting pitchers and kind of a look at the offenses and the bullpens. So that's available every day over at bangthebook.com. Got a preview up for UFC Saturday, UFC on ESPN 9, I believe it is. Uh, You've got a main event there of Tyron Woodley and Gilbert Burns. That's at the UFC Apex facility in Las Vegas. An interesting little betting angle possibly with that venue. So head on over to bangthebook.com. Check out that UFC preview. I'll get a horse racing preview up for the Santa Maria Stakes at Santa Anita. That'll come your way uh, either later today or sometime on Friday. We'll preview the NASCAR race for this weekend at Bristol, as well as the Xfinity Series race coming up this week at Bristol Last night, rained out in Charlotte, so that race going off tonight in the Alsco Uniforms 500. That preview available over at bangthebook.com. And, of course, we're starting to get some more clarity here on when sports are coming back. Charles J. taking a look over at European soccer for us uh, with the Bundesliga and also La Liga. Saw today the English Premier League coming back uh, June 17th, I think that is. We've got the Santa Anita Derby next weekend, uh, so... You know, we're starting to get back to normal a little bit here over at bangthebook.com. So it's time for you to come back as well and check out everything that we have to offer. Make sure you check out our sportsbook reviews as well. I mentioned DSI on the show every day, but we've got reviews for places like Bet Online, Five Dimes, My Bookie, Bovada, Bookmaker, all the heavy hitters out there in the business. You can check out some of those reviews over at bangthebook.com. And of course, coming up after the weekend here, On Monday, another edition of the Monday Mailbag at Skating Tripods on Twitter or Skating Tripods at gmail.com if you want to send me some questions for the Monday Mailbag. Also, if you want to get on the notes list for the Better's Box show notes, adam at bangthebook.com via email or skatingtripods at gmail.com. All right, so we dive in here to this Thursday edition of the Better's Box. We'll take a look beyond the box score Recap the series that just wrapped up, and then take a look here at the weekend ahead as well. So let's go ahead and get in to that Beyond the Box Score segment here. And, you know, last week I talked about how the first inning yes or no for runs scored was 25-5 and five to the yes. And, of course, because I've mushed pretty much everything I've talked about here in the KBO so far, that went 0-5 on Tuesday. So there were no first inning runs in the five games on Tuesday However, 5-0 and on Wednesday, 3-2 and on Thursday. So we're back to 8-2 and over the last couple of days. And over the last week and a half here, 33-12 and with a first inning run. Now, I've noticed that a lot of sports books are adding some additional KBO betting options. I've seen team totals out there. I've seen the runs plus hits plus errors over under. And I've seen these first inning yes or no's. Now, some sports books have picked up on this already that it's been pretty profitable with first inning runs. Others haven't necessarily picked up on it to the same degree. So you may still find some very reasonably juiced yes-no first inning score props. And when you've got games without the four and starting pitchers, and I haven't gone back and actually tracked this or anything like that, but I would assume when you have games without the four and starting pitchers, this has been a pretty good betting angle. So Maybe something you want to take a look at here as we head on into the weekend. But 25-5 and five last week, 8-7 and seven here so far this week uh, with 15 more games coming up here over the weekend. Wanted to take a quick look here at what we've seen so far. And all of these teams have played at least 20 games. Some of them have played 21. We did have that Saturday with a few rainouts during the first week of the season. Those games will have to be made up as doubleheaders down the line. Everybody's played at least 20 games here. Four teams have played 21 games. Wanted to look real quickly at some Pythagorean win-loss numbers early on. 
Now, again, we're talking about about a seventh of the season for these teams. They play 144 games in the KBO. So we're not talking about a large sample size by any means, but just trying to get a feel for teams that have maybe underachieved or overachieved a little bit relative to their Pythagorean win-loss expectation. Now, the formula for Pythagorean win-loss is not something I'm going to bore you with, but just know that it factors run differential into the equation very, very heavily. So it's basically a win-loss metric based on runs scored and runs allowed and the expectation of what a team's record would be based on their run differential. So to this point here, the NC Dinos, 17-3. and three. Their expected win percentage based on their run differential is 763, which is about 15 and 15.3 and 4.7. So NC overachieving by a couple of games here in Pythagorean win loss to this point. And a big reason for that is because they are six and one in one run games. So that is something that is factored in the equation quite a bit as to why we've got these big discrepancies between Pythagorean win loss and the actual win-loss record. The LG Twins are 14-6 and six here so far. Their expected win percentage by Pythagorean win-loss is 6-10. That's 12.2 and 7.8. So LG, roughly about a 12-8 and eight team by Pythagorean win-loss here so far. And again, these sample sizes are very small. I'm not worried about discrepancies of a couple of games or anything like that. But just to give you an idea here, if these things don't start to even out with records in close games, blowouts, stuff like that, because LG is a team that has had several blowout wins here so far that would skew their Pythagorean win-loss expectation a little bit. So there is that. Blowouts and one-run games are really the two reasons why you get some big differences here in actual record and Pythagorean win-loss. The Doosan Bears are 12-8. and eight. But Doosan, with a negative uh, run differential here on the season, an expected win percentage of 493. So they're more like a 10 and 10 team here thus far. Again, two games better than their Pythagorean win loss expectation. The Kia Tigers, 11 and 10 with a 505 expected win percentage. They're about right where they should be. 10.6 and 10.4 would be their expected win loss record there. So if we round up and round down, they're right at 11 and 10. They're playing up to their expectation right now. The lot the Giants, they're 10 and 10, but they have a 395 expected win percentage. That's about 8 and 12. So they're overachieving by a couple of games here. And this is a team that was very good offensively in the first week, very bad offensively since then, and terrible offensively here in their most recent three games. Uh, but they're a team that looks like they overachieved early on in the season. Now they're getting some of that negative regression coming into the picture. The Kiwoom Heroes, they're 10 and 11. Their expected win percentage, 491. So if we round that, that would also be 10 and 11 there for them. So Kiwoom is a team that is performing right around their expectations based on their performance so far. One team that is not is the KT Wiz. KT, 9 and 11 on the season, but a 582 expected win percentage. They should be more like a 12-8 and eight ball club. So they've actually underachieved by about three wins to this point in time. And a big reason why is because they were 0-5 in one-run games. Entering Thursday, got their first one-run win of the season in that 6-5 to five victory on Thursday. So KT is a little bit of an underachiever to this point in time. They've had multiple bullpen collapses that have really hurt them. KT may be a little bit of a buy team here. And in fact... Somebody I really greatly respect in my betting network did take a piece of KT to win the KBO championship here. So, again, kind of looking at a team that maybe should be performing a little bit better than they are at this point in time. Another team in that department here is the Samsung Lions. They are 8-13, and 13, but their Pythagorean expected win percentage, 481, more like a 10-11 and 11 ball club. Now, Samsung, of course, is a team that, you know, has a lot of issues. I mean, they, they, you know, they've drawn a lot of walks. They haven't cashed them in. Contact quality is a big issue for them. They've definitely had some issues with that. So, you know, this is a Samsung team that may be a little bit better than they've been so far. But again, a tough team to back with some rather lackluster pitching 
and a pretty lackluster offense. The Hanwha Eagles, 7-14 and 14 on the year. Their expected win percentage of 318 would have them at about 7-14. and 14. So they've pretty much played to their expectations to this point in time. Finally, SK, 4-16 and 16 for them with their actual record, 306 Pythagorean win-loss. That puts them around 6-14. and 14. So they've underachieved by a couple of games early on here in the season. But that's what happens when you have the league's worst offense. So, again, nothing of great consequence. A few teams about two wins better than expected. A few teams about two losses better than expected. KT, the only one that really stands out in a big way, uh, being about three wins worse than they should be. But, again, it's early in the process, but this is still something I'm going to keep an eye on here with regards to blowout wins, one-run wins, stuff like that. As we look at some of the bullpens around the KBO here to this point, I've got a couple of potential positive regression candidates and three potential negative regression candidates. We start on the positive side here with the Hanwha Eagles. You know, this Hanwha bullpen, they've allowed 15 home runs. That's the most in the KBO. That's one of the many reasons why they've struggled. They're also not a great team defensively. But when you look at their bullpen, They've got a 71 to 26 strikeout to walk ratio. That's the best in the KBO to this point in time. So they've got about a strikeout per inning, which is very good from a relief standpoint in this league. They've run into some bad luck, some sequencing luck, some uh, batted ball luck with the home runs, stuff like that. But I do think that Hanwa's bullpen should get better as the season goes along here if they're able to maintain what is a really spectacular strikeout-to-walk ratio for this league. One other one here is the Kia bullpen. Now, their bullpen's been pretty good in and of itself, but I think that they've got either staying power or could get a little bit better. Kia's bullpen, 63 strikeouts and 68 innings pitched, only 30 walks. That's one of the better marks in the league. They've also only allowed six home runs, and three of those came in the first series of the season. So the Kia bullpen has been very, very strong, doing a good job limiting walks, limiting home runs. If you think Kia is going to have a lead, they're probably a pretty good bet in that game. Some negative regression candidates here, and we start with the LG bullpen. Now, the LG bullpen has only walked 22 batters in 72 innings. So that's really their claim to fame. They've done a very, very good job at limiting walks. However, the LG bullpen also only has 43 strikeouts in 72 innings. So it looks like there's some pretty good BABIP luck going on here for this LG bullpen, and they are the best bullpen in the KBO from an ERA standpoint by more than a run. So this is a group that I do think will regress a little bit. I do think more batted balls will find holes. So LG, if you're looking at them from a full game standpoint, maybe some worries about their bullpen a little bit here as we go forward. The NC bullpen, I mean, everything's come up roses for NC so far this season. They're 17-3. and three. They lead the league in slugging percentage. But their bullpen here, only a 45-36 to 36 strikeout-to-walk ratio in 16 a third innings pitched. Now, they've only allowed five home runs, and they've only allowed 55 hits. So they've relied on the defense. They've kept the ball in the ballpark. But I'm showing them with a 418 ERA but a 151 whip. So that walk rate and the low strikeout rate could become problematic for them here as this season goes along. But for right now, everything coming up roses for them, limiting home runs, limiting hits, they've been able to get by with that bullpen. Finally here, the Samsung bullpen. 82 and two-thirds innings pitched for the Samsung bullpen. That is the most in the KBO 63 to 46 strikeout to walk ratio. They're carrying a 162 whip. Again, walks and hits per inning pitched, but a 468 ERA. Other teams have a, a whip in the 160s with a bullpen ERA well up over five, maybe approaching six. So Samsung, it does seem like, has gotten a little bit fortunate here in terms of stranding runners, or maybe they've just passed those runs onto the starting pitchers. But the Samsung bullpen... Difficult to trust here based on what I've seen through the first 21 games for them. All right, so we take a look here at the series that just wrapped up, and we start with Kia and KT. The KT Wiz, 
They take two out of three in this series here. Very low scoring series. They win this series by a count of 12 to nine in the run department. You know, Bay J. Seung, I wanted, I thought about going against him in this series here. He gives up one run on four hits, struck out three, walked four. He's running a 91% left on base percentage, according to Fangraphs. 107 ERA, 345 FIP, 13.6% K percentage on the season here for Bay. So regression is probably coming. 72.8% left on base percentage last year. So I would expect him to run into some difficulties here over his next few starts. We'll see what exactly that entails. But Bay J. Seong, a guy that I do like, a guy I isolated as a watchlist candidate coming into the season, probably in line for some regression here in this one. There were only two home runs hit in this series, both of them off of 19-year-old So Hyung Jun. He'll make his next start here. We'll talk about him again in a couple of minutes over the weekend. You know, the KT offense only had four doubles here. And as I mentioned, only two home runs, both of them hit by KT or by Kia, excuse me. So the low slugging percentage output, very rare for KT here for this season. Not something that they're really accustomed to. They still find a way to win the series. Maybe that's a good sign for them as they go forward. Also, they hit Yang Hyun Jong, who's probably the most accomplished of the South Korean-born starting pitchers. He gave up six runs on 11 hits in his start here on Thursday. So KT finding different ways to win. And again, that's a positive thing for this team, especially because their bullpen may be settling down a little bit. Nine innings in this series, three earned, nine hits, struck out seven, did walk five. So the whip still not great for them, but maybe a little bit of positive regression in the ERA department, maybe getting a little bit better here. Maybe something you want to watch with a very young KT pitching staff. LG and Hanwa. LG with the sweep here. Hanwa only scored four runs in the three games of this series. And, you know, they faced Tyler Wilson. They faced Casey Kelly. Casey Kelly struck out 10 on his start here on Thursday. But for Hanwa here, 18 hits in the series, only six walks. That's not going to get it done in the KBO. You've got to get base runners here in this low strikeout environment, and they just didn't do it. A slow start for Jared Hoying. He had the injury. Hanwa's other injuries kind of adding up a little bit. You know, I mentioned that they're starting shortstop and they're starting second baseman are out right now. 19-year-old No C Juan. He struck out 15 times in 33 plate appearances this season. Struck out 72 times in 192 plate appearances last season. So Hanwha loses a couple of guys at the top of the order. They move a guy to the bottom of the order at shortstop. He's not getting it done. The middle of the order is not getting it done. This Hanwha offense definitely in a bad way right now. Struck out 25 times over the three games in this series. And again, that LG bullpen, very, very good. 325 ERA, 122 whip. But I do think there is a little bit of regression coming for that LG bullpen. We'll see if that happens here in their next series. SK, they salvaged the last game against Doosan. They avoid the sweep. You know, for Doosan here, only 11 runs scored in this series. I had the under in game one. SK gave up four unearned runs in the eighth inning. That one blew up that under. I've had some bad luck in that department. I've had some bad handicaps too, but I've had some real freaky things happen in some of the games that I've played. The SK bullpen... Eight innings in this series, didn't give up any earned runs, gave up the four unearned runs, of course, in the first game. But the Doosan offense here, only 14 hits. They scored six runs on four hits in the opening game of this series. So 11 runs on 14 hits against an SK pitching staff that really hasn't been very good over the course of the season. So Doosan regressing a little bit offensively, maybe. Also probably a commentary on the park factor. Doosan is not a great hitter's park at all whatsoever. They're going to play differently at home than they will on the road. And maybe that's what this series kind of illustrated a little bit for us. Park Jong-Hoon for SK. Seven innings, one earned, eight strikeouts, pitched very, very well. Moon Sung Wan, you know, a guy I mentioned as a guy that, you know, I felt like he had pitched better than his results would suggest. And here in this one, 
you know, third time through, got him once again, blew up in the fifth inning. A lot of innings like that, the third time through, or just overall bullpen innings in particular, innings start with a walk or a hit by pitch or an error, something like that. And everything just goes haywire at that point in time. And Moon Sung Wan has had a few of those for SK. I think he's pitched a lot better again than his stat line would suggest. Maybe a buy candidate. But again, SK, not a very good bullpen, terrible offense. Tough to back this team in a lot of contexts. One guy for Doosan I want to highlight here, Yu Hui Kwan. Eight earned runs allowed in 22 innings, but he's allowed 38 base runners. So this is a guy that probably in line for some negative regression, uh, but you know, wound up pitching pretty well here in his start against SK. Samsung and Lotta. Samsung takes two out of three in a low-scoring series. And in fact, Lotta only scored three runs in this series, one run per game. Naturally, the one under I play in this series, Samsung scores 11 runs and draws 11 walks. They had four runs in the other two games combined. So, again, just one of those things, I guess timing is everything. But, you know, you look at this series here, Samsung drew 18 walks, but they only score the 15 runs. Poor contact quality for this Samsung team. And again, they will play different on the road than they do at home where their power production is a little bit neutered. They're drawing walks, but their contact quality right now looks to be pretty bad. So if they're in a situation where you don't think they're going to draw walks, you fade them or you bet the under. That's what I'm going to look to do with Samsung here in some of their upcoming games. And in fact, they got some very good pitching in this series. And then maybe it was the bad Giants offense, but Choi Che Hyung, seven innings, three hits, struck out five, walked three. He's a guy on the watch list. Juan Te In, he pitched great. One unearned run over eight innings, struck out six. Those were two guys on the watch list that I wanted to bet on. Um, You know, I took the under in Juan Te In start. They give him 11 runs of support. But Choi Che Hyung, another good start for him. The college guy, uh, pitched for several national teams. Very, very good pitcher for Samsung. And in the final game, they threw their second round pick out there from the 2020, uh, or their first round pick from the 2020 second rookie draft for last year. Uh, he actually gave up, I think, one run over five innings, walked four and only struck out one. But Samsung's got some very good young pitching here that may help them out as we get deeper into the season. The lot the Giants, again, they scored three runs. They had 16 hits, 10 walks. They scored 52 runs in their first seven games. They've scored 35 runs in their last 13 games. This is kind of a they are what we thought they were type of thing because they played so well at the outset, opened some eyes, were a big surprise. Since then, they've really fallen back into looking like last year's team. The starting pitching hasn't been very good. The bullpen hasn't been very good. The offense has obviously been putrid. A lot of the Giants are just a very tough team to back right now in any context. NC with a sweep of Kiwum. They covered the run line in every game. Three more lopsided wins for NC. They outscore Kiwum 26-11 to in this series. And you look, man, NC can do no wrong. Kuchang Mo, great start again. Lee J. Hack was solid. And then Kim Young Yu. He wasn't good, but NC scores five late off the Kiwoom bullpen, got us a winner on the run line, and also helped us getting over the total in that game. Uh, so a pretty good Thursday, thanks to NC. But you look at this series for Kiwoom, and maybe they're just not very good. You know, last year, they were the best offensive team in the KBO. They had the second best bullpen and the most base running value per wins above average as tracked by status, this year they're just not very good. They had 12 reliever appearances in this series. Nine of those relievers gave up at least a run. The offense hasn't been great. Byung-Ho Park is not hitting. They lost Jerry Sands. Kiwum just, they're not great this year. And and we got to try to figure out, is this just a slow start or is it something more? Is this a sign of what the future of this team may look like? And I do think, there are some young pitchers that I do want to try to back here. Uh, Choi, I think Choi Wan Tae is one of them. Lee Seung Ho is another. But Kiwum's just not hitting, and they're not getting the relief work. And I'm not sure how to really handle that situation for them right now. So, 
Kiwum, at least to this point, very, very difficult to back. We'll see what they do here in their upcoming series. As, as we transition, excuse me, to a look at the weekend here, Hanwa and SK, the two worst offenses in the KBO, KT and Kiwum, LG and Kia, Lata and Dusan, NC and Samsung are your five series here for this week in the KBO. And we start with a look at that Hanwa and SK series. The Hanwa bullpen could be something you want to fade here in this series. Now, I just talked about how I do think that they're a positive regression candidate. They've got an incredible strikeout to walk ratio. However, they had to work 13 and two thirds innings in the first three games of this week. Five and two thirds on Tuesday, five on Wednesday, three on Thursday in the Warwick softball start. But they got two short starts, one from Chad Bell, who was coming back off of injury. Um, That could be a factor here later in these games. Their offense is really struggling, as I just talked about. SK, bad offense. Maybe this is a chance to play some low overs, though. That Hanwha bullpen, again, has the positive regression signs, but a heavy workload early on here. Sawpold start has already passed. It's going to be the back of the rotation with their domestic starting pitchers. Ricardo Pinto for SK. He's walked 11. He's struggled. Only Dan Straley has more walks among the foreign starting pitchers than Ricardo Pinto. And I think Straley has made one more start than Pinto. So maybe we get a chance to play some low over eight and a half, low over nines with, you know, under juice, stuff like that. Again, obviously a leap of faith here with these two offenses and also with SK missing Han Dong Min, who was a career 370 on base percentage guy with a 518 slugging percentage. So the SK offense, not at full strength. The Hanwha offense, not at full strength at all. But maybe these two pitching staffs have some difficulty here. Maybe we get a chance to play some low overs. We'll see how this series winds up getting lined. KT and Kiwum. Next, William Cuevas start for KT. Uh, Kiwum is without Jake Brigham. He's out with some elbow discomfort. Eric Jokic will get his next start in this series, facing a pretty good key, uh, KT lineup. So Young Jun, he was terrible against Hanwha last time out. What does he do to bounce back here in this one? Uh, Choi Wan Tae, next start for him. He is a watch list guy for Kiwum. Tough series to handicap, I think, because KT seems like their offense may be cooling off a little bit. They've got some injury considerations and concerns as well. Kiwum's just not hitting. These are two iffy bullpens, so maybe we get some late runs. I think this series is full of difficult handicaps. We'll see what the prices look like, and we'll see if I have some action for this series. Uh, Jokic could probably shut down the KT offense. That's about the only thing I'm kind of thinking here at the outset. But again, this Kiwum ball club, just not very good for a variety of different reasons. I don't know if that's going to turn around for them, but if it is, I would certainly like to see some signs here in the near future. LG and Kia. Next start for Aaron Brooks here of Kia in this series. A lot of hits, but the low walk total has really helped him. Kia leads the KBO in walks, so they're not giving up a lot of free passes, making teams hit their way on board. LG is a team that hits its way on board. Big slugging percentage advantage in this series here over Kia. Will that LG bullpen regress? That's something I'm kind of looking at a little bit here in this series because that LG bullpen, again, has been really, really good, but they don't have the strikeout numbers. So some of those balls will eventually find some holes. Cha Wu Chan makes his next start for LG here in this series, and I think he may be a fade guy. You know, he's one of the more accomplished South Korean pitchers, but now that the ball's playing a little bit differently, he's struggled a little bit here early on in the season, maybe a fade opportunity here as he takes on Kia. Uh, Maybe this is a series where we do find some opportunity to make some plays and hopefully cash some tickets. Lata and Doosan, and obviously the big question here in this series, can the Lata Giants keep up with that Doosan offense? You got two bad bullpens, you got two below average rotations, but one offense that's hitting and one offense that isn't. And the deuce on prices, because they're such a good offensive team, they've been pretty high. But this is a deuce on squad with a negative run differential. And as I said, again, their Pythagorean win-loss, 
they would have a losing record, and right now they don't. Lotta, they're batting 222 with runners in scoring position so far. Doosan's batting 328. So you've got the best and the worst with runners in scoring position. And you wonder here, is there some regression towards the mean both ways? Will the Giants offense be able to break out against a bad Doosan pitching staff? Will the Doosan offense struggle much like it did here in this last series against SK? Interesting series, could be some price-dependent opportunities. Again, lot of very difficult to back right now, but Doosan is not as good as their betting odds would suggest, at least when you look at you know, some of their advanced metrics and some of the underlying things with their numbers early on in the season. Finally here, NC and Samsung. NC leads the KBO in slugging percentage, and now they go to a great hitter's park in Samsung. Now for or in uh, Daegu, Samsung, they hit better at home. However, in this series, Samsung draws Drew Rasinski, Mike Wright, and Ku Chang Mo. So Samsung, a lineup that has been overpowered a lot over the course of the season here already, they get three of maybe the best starting pitchers in the KBO. So we're going to get very big NC prices once again in this series. I do think their prices may be a little bit inflated for this series. They are something of a negative regression candidate. But Samsung, I mean, look, Tyler Saladino is carrying a sub-500 OPS. David Buchanan might just be a stiff, and I think he is. This Samsung team, look, they draw a lot of walks, and, and maybe they can do something with that against Rasinski and Wright, who have had some control issues. Ku Chang Mo, though, has just been mowing teams down. He's just been incredible. And, you know, maybe Samsung against Rasinski, against Wright, at some, you know, plus one and a half, even money, plus one and a half, maybe even plus money. Maybe you look at those here a little bit. But again, Samsung's bullpen to me looks like a regression candidate. So NC probably just continues on the warpath here. And I'd be surprised if we get anything different. But again, we're talking about run lines for NC that are probably going to be minus 140, minus 150 in some of these games in this series because they're going to be that big of a favorite. So tough to bet this series, I think. Looks like maybe a weekend of limited opportunity, but... We'll see what happens here once we get some prices to actually talk about in the marketplace. So again, coming up on Monday after the weekend, new edition of the Monday Mailbag, Adam at bangthebook.com, skatingtripods at gmail.com. Those are the ways to get in touch with me for that. And of course, make sure you're reading the daily KBO article over at bangthebook.com. And also check out our UFC, NASCAR, uh, and some of our other soccer content as well. That'll do it for me. Thank you so much for listening, everybody. And remember that you will never strike out when you're in the betters box.